In this video I'm going to be looking at how you can tell if a number will be in a given sequence. Um, the sort of question I'm asking here is if I carried on this sequence which starts with 17, 24, 31, 38, 45, would the number 2008 appear in that sequence? Well, I'm going to talk about three methods, but method one is really rather useless in this case. Um, you could just carry on the sequence, couldn't you? You could carry on writing numbers. Look, notice that this one goes up in sevens. So you could carry it on. You could say, well, I'm going to keep adding on seven, so I get 45, and then I get 52, and then I get 59, and then I get 66, and then I get, excuse me, 73, and carry on like that. The trouble is that you're going to be here forever trying to find out if 2008 will ever be reached. That's what the question is asking you. Are we going to reach 2008 if I keep counting up in sevens? You're not going to be able to tell for a very long time and that's really a really inefficient use of your time. So I'm going to say no to method one. Don't keep counting up. Method two is a little bit more analytical. If you look at this 45 here, right, and we're going to keep adding sevens, and are we going to get to 2008? Well, if we are, that gap has got to be made up of sevens. Okay, if that gap was made up of sevens, if that was lots and lots of sevens all added on, then we would reach 2008. So let's just check, let's see if that gap between 45 and 2008 is made up of sevens. How do we do that? Well, let's first of all, first of all work out what that gap is. 2008 minus 45 gives you 3, 6, 9, 1, 9, 6, Three. Now to tell if that's made up of sevens, to tell if that's sort of in the seven times table, I need to divide it by seven. And we just do that quickly. You could use a calculator if this was on a non on a calculated paper, but you, you could also use this method. Sevens into nineteen goes twice with five left over. Yes. Sevens into fifty six. Well, how many is that? Sevens 42, is that 8? I think that's 8. 8 sevens of 56, yes. And then sevens into 3 doesn't go. And suddenly we have to go into decimals. So sevens into 30 goes, what's that? 4 with 2 left over, etc, etc, etc. The point here is that 7 doesn't go into 1963 a whole number of times. The answer is a decimal. And if that's the case, then that means that this gap here between 45 and 2008, it's not made up of 7s. So you can say categorically 2008 will not be in the sequence. And my work in here has shown that it's demonstrated that if you counted up from 45 in sevens, you wouldn't get to 2008 because you wouldn't make that gap of 1963 using sevens. You can't do it. Method three is perhaps the one that most sort of maths teachers, I guess, would use. People that were really proficient with their maths and, and would want to do this efficiently would say, OK, well, if I want to make this number 2008 from this sequence, a good starting point is to work out a formula for this sequence. So let's work out the formula for that sequence. It's going up in 7, so it's 7n, and it starts at 17. So my formula is 7n plus 10. Now, if I was working out the first term, I would do 7 times 1 plus 10, which is 17. If I was working out the second term, it would be 7 times 2 plus 10, 
which is 24, etc, etc, etc. Now, if I'm going to try and find a number which I can use, okay, unknown number, and I'm going to try to make 2008, how can I figure out what number that would be? Well, one way of doing it is to form an equation and to just to write down the formula for your um, nth term and say it's equal to 2008. If I can solve that equation and then work out the value of n, I'll be able to tell what term in the sequence this is. So solving the equation just gives you 7n equals 1918. Um, Sorry, 1998. That's right, isn't it? And then if I try to divide that by 7, I should find, let's do it on a new piece of paper. There we go. So we had 7n divided by, uh, sorry, 7n equals 1998. Divide by 7. And I'll get n equals, now, 1998 divided by 7. Let's try and work that out. You get 2, 7s into 59 goes uh, 8 times, with 3 left over, and 7s into 38 goes 5 times, with 3 left over, and again, we're into decimals. And the fact that we're into decimals tells me that this n number is going to be 285 point what is that 42 blah 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 now what that's telling me is that 2008 um, is not a whole number term in this sequence if you remember all of the terms that I worked out in the sequence had to use a whole number n has to be a whole number because I want either the first term or the second term or the third term or the 53rd term. But if n turns out to be a decimal like this, that means that the term is not a number in the sequence. So we can say because this is not an integer, integer means whole number, 2008 is not in the sequence. Okay, so it is down to you which method you would like to use. You can use method 1, counting up, although if you've got a long way to go, say up to 2008, that's going to take you far too long. You can use method 2, you can start to look at the gap between the last number that you've got in your term and where you're aiming for and see if it's made up of 7s in this case. Or you can try this method 3, which is a bit more algebraic and um, even at this last stage requires some detailed working. So unless you're really confident, I guess I would recommend method 2.